Hello there, folks. Dave Kelso again, aka Time Warrior, bringing you what I'm calling the Sovereignty and Empowerment Bitch Rant. Yeah, well, it's not really a bitch rant. I'm not going to be condemning of anybody and, you know, I'm not like in a hateful or angry like sort of mood or anything. It's just going to be, I'm going to be speaking incredibly passionately. And from a typical societal standpoint, um, because, you know, most people are living in the misery paradigm. Passion is often misinterpreted as pissy, because we view our world through our little rosy-colored glasses, our paradigm filters that we choose to be things from, and no one, not even God, can force us to do otherwise, so... I'm just aligning with my demographic here. I'm aligning with my audience. A lot of my audience is probably going to perceive this as a bitch rant. So, okay, cool. Let's call it a bitch rant then. You know, it's gonna get me more views anyway, right? So, here's here's the deal. I've been having a lot, a lot, a lot of reflections in my reality as of late. A lot of sovereignty moments, a lot of, you know, friends and, and people reflecting all sorts of, of stuff to me, and, you know, I really think that, you know, there's some shit I need to address, because, I mean, this is all pretty common stuff, but it's not really common for people to address it in the way that I'm intending to, to address it here, and the way I'm intending to address it is to really bring some annoying clarity to it. Why do I say annoying clarity? Because, it, because it's like, um, George Orwell once said, George Orwell once said, that the farther a society drifts away from truth, the more that society will hate those who speak it. And this society has drifted about as far away from truth as one can get, and I'm about to speak some really intense truth, so haters who are gonna hate, <laughs> load up your ammo, I'm putting myself on the target line here, because I want to. <laughs> I, and I've got no problem with it. <clears throat> um, it's just, you know, Oh my goodness, really, really interesting experiences, because I guess you could say the main theme is, like, how not only we judge ourselves, but how we use that self-judgment to filter our view of everyone else and then try to force other people to align with that view. And I'm going to give a few specific examples. Um, where I'm, shall we say, allowed to name drop, I'll name drop, and where I'm not, I, I won't, and by allowed, I just mean, you know, where it is in path of least resistance, uh, you might say. Um, first I'll use a personal example in my life. Um, my mom's side of, of my extended family, right, um, especially my aunt, which is, um, her, her half-sister. Um, she, in my humble opinion, is one of the most coldest, uncaring women, I'm talking about the aunt, not my mom, my mom's awesome, not perfect, but awesome. Um, my aunt is one of the most coldest, uncaring, frickin' apathetic, discompassionate people to ever walk the earth, and, you know, as I was growing up, it's like, you know, that used to, like, really hurt me. And, you know, my aunt has always been really cruel and cold towards towards my mom as well. And, like, um, my aunt is also a coward, so she doesn't really have too much balls to talk all the shit about the person she's talking shit about, but behind people's backs, she's more than happy to talk. And a long time ago, I got tired of her just talking all this shit about my mom to me every time I would see her and my mom wasn't there. So needless to say, I, I very politely put her in her place. I mean, I didn't even drop any F-bombs or anything, which was like, you know, really amazing that I had so much calm and, and cool resolve because let me tell you what, what I said to her those years ago. It doesn't anywhere near match the fullness, the fuck you -ness of, you know, my, my feelings about the situation. But I was calm and cool and articulate and incredibly sarcastic. And needless to say, me and my aunt haven't spoken since, and awesome. I don't need someone like that in my life. <laughs> and it's just like, 
we tend to, like, give ourselves a guilt trip for feeling how we feel. You know, we tend to have this idea like, oh, well, I think that that person's an asshole, but, you know, I really shouldn't be thinking that person's an asshole because then that's judging them. And, you know, everybody's good at heart, right? And I, I and people are just going through what they're going through. And I really, I really shouldn't judge people. And, and that makes me a bad, horrible person. And no, it doesn't. And that's not judgment. What judgment is, is allowing a force of will upon yourself and thus forcing your own will on others. Judgment is saying that you're not allowed to think someone's an asshole. Well, let me tell you, thinking someone's an asshole, that's just an opinion. And as long as you give everyone else the right to their opinion, too, then there's no judgment charge. Because when you think someone's an asshole, all you're really saying is, you know, their, their personality, their attitude, really isn't a cooperative component to my life. It's, um, it's like trying to drive with the parking brake on. So, of course, it's not really going to get you anywhere if you're driving with the parking brake on. So, when, when we think about judgment and we condemn ourselves about, oh my god, I'm passing judgment, I shouldn't do that, it's like saying, you know, if I don't drive with the parking brake on, I'm, I'm in negative judgment against the parking brake, and I'm being this horrible, terrible person, and I shouldn't do that. No, if someone's an asshole, you're an asshole. It doesn't necessarily mean there's no hope for them. It doesn't mean that they're, you know, a terrible person deserving eternal damnation in hell or, you know, anything like that. You know, you don't, you don't even have to go there. They're probably just a person having a lot of problems and not knowing how to deal with it and they got their own emotional negative feedback loops that are sending them down an abyss. But you can't force your will on them to save them from that situation, they're going to do what they're going to do, and they're going to see the world through their little paradigm filter glasses, no matter what you say about it, no matter what anybody else says about it, not even God can do anything about that, okay? All you can do is be sovereign and stick up for yourself and decide for yourself what you want for your life. Because society trains us to stick up for our individuality, but at the same time trains us to take everyone else's expression of individuality as an attack on our own. We, we have this, you know, built-in internal Nazi that the educational system and society has put there. Which, by the way, our educational system is built on the Prussian system, which is based in neo-Nazism. And if you don't believe me, look it up. It's their objective is to compartmentalize everything, make it more like a, a military or a prison, that sort of infrastructure, like a, a meat packaging assembly line, to remove critical thinking from the system, to just create blind, obedient sheep that are kept beaten down by repression, because it was thought by the people who came up with this wonderful system of ours that... Um, the reason that a nation loses a war is because they have military personnel who think for themselves too much. So you gotta stop people from thinking for themselves. So, I mean, you know, hey, if you don't believe me, look it up online. All the historical information is there. It's public domain, you know, human historical record. They just don't teach it in school, and <laughs> it's no wonder why. Um, Another aspect of this stupid, you know, condemnation bullshit that we do to ourselves and that other people do to us and sometimes we do to others. The whole idea of, get a job, you, you slacker. I mean, especially, like, there are so many people these days with amazing creative capability. And, um, especially in the 21st century, so many avenues to make major, major, major money, especially online using your creative abilities. But as soon as you try to use your creative abilities to make money online, you're presented with, oh, well, you need to go get a real job. That's not gonna get you anywhere. That's not gonna make you any money. And the reason people are saying that to you is like, they're expecting you like, oh, well, if you are if you were just so good, then you're gonna make a million dollars a second. And if you're not making a million dollars a second, then what you're doing is never gonna work. So you need to go be a slave at Walmart. And it's like, what? That's like saying, you, you better plant a tree seed today and have a 40-foot tree tomorrow. And if you don't, then you're just deluding yourselves about the existence of tree seeds. Tree seeds are, are a myth, they're a delusion. It's like, it's completely fucking neurotic. We, we've ex the accepted norm is that if something is way overpriced and we're being bent over and raped, that that's legit. And that if something is, is fair priced and operating on a system of fairness, something that actually works efficiently, that, oh, that must be a scam. 
I'd ask if you people are out of your goddamn neurotic minds, but I already know the answer to that. And then you've got your people that are working these lap of luxury, really, you know, high-paying jobs that the very minority of people work, like six figures and higher jobs, but they're, they're, I mean, they're still in the, the rat race. They're in that, they're still in that paradigm to where they're, they're busting their ass for that money, but they're busting their ass surrounded by people who are kissing their ass and driving around in, in you know, limousines and, you know, luxurious jets and whatever else, so even if they, they started from the quote-unquote poor and worked their way up, they've forgotten how the other half lived, so when they see someone else who's, who's struggling and trying, trying to make it, and especially when that person has decided to take it upon themselves to be entrepreneurial and use their God-given artistic gifts to make money with the 21st century paradigm technologies that, that are available for us to do it, all of a sudden they're saying that, oh, well, if you don't get a, a, a minimum wage job at, at, you know, fucking Walmart, bend over and be someone's bitch, then you're not going to succeed in life and... You know, they're berating the crap out of you. And most of these people are probably older. You know, they're, they're used to, like, you know, what life used to be like in the 60s, where you could be in your teens or 20s and just go out and get a job. And, you know, 10 years later, you've worked your way up and, you know, everything's great. And you've got money in the bank and the house and, the, you know, um, it, standard family and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? That's the American dream. And as George Carlin said, they call it the American dream because you gotta be asleep to believe it. I mean, seriously, in the real world where most of us live, you have rich people becoming broke, unable to, you know, pay their mortgages, losing their jobs, you've got families becoming homeless, you've got tens of thousands of people being laid off all the time. You know, I mean, it's really getting difficult. It's even being addressed in Congress. There's, there are videos where you can see people in Congress stepping up and saying there's a war, and they're not talking about any war in the Middle East. There's a war, the top 1% billionaires and trillionaires against everybody else. And the gap between the ultra-rich and the ultra-poor is widening. So, you know, when, when these people are saying, oh, well, you need to go get a job and join the rat race and that'll lead to success. That's like saying, oh, see that forest fire over there? You need to go fucking dance in it. Because only by dancing in an inferno will you ever hope to live your life. Well, I'm sorry, if you dance in an inferno, you're going to burn up and die. And that's what people are doing. They're burning up and dying by, you know, there are people going into, with what little money they have, going in, into transportation fare or gasoline debt, going on job inter interviews for jobs that there's no way in hell they're going to get. Because for every job position, even if it's a bagger at Walmart, for every job position, you've got like 2,000 applicants. Because things are that bad. I refer to this as the job lottery. Because you're spending money on transportation fare and whatever to get your ticket. <laughs> your lottery ticket to maybe win your, your slave position. Your paid indentured, you know, servitude. And... You know, another thing that I've been experiencing is you've got these, like, so-called, um, you know, even even in, in the various entrepreneurial movements and stuff, you've got these so-called, you know, team leaders that are encouraging people to be independent and sovereign and, and be their own boss, and yeah, you can live the good life and make all this money and whatever, but they've got this holier-than-thou, my-way-or-the-highway fucking attitude, and, you know, when you look at them and... You see what they're doing in their lives. They're not doing much, much better than you are. And you're looking at them like, well, wait a minute. I see that the tools and everything that they're, they're offering do have valid practical application. And if, if we learn how to use those tools, they could be a benefit. But who the fuck are they trying to tell me that I got to use those tools the way they say I got to use them? It's like, wait a minute, what? You know, in this society, we've allowed the tools to become our masters. And... 
We're seeing the instruction manual for how to use the tool as the instruction manual for how to live our life. It, you know, it'd be like, be like if you're going to use a, uh, a hammer to build something with a project, uh, that that the the application for how to use that hammer, it, you know, if you misunderstand that to be the application for how to live your life, well, living your life like a hammer doesn't really sound so fun because it, it means you're beating up and getting beat up. You know what I mean? That's what a hammer does. Whack, 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 whack. You know. And I mean, it's ridiculous and it's you know it's neurotic. And this is where we are. And I'm not in any way trying to be negative or pessimistic, because there is obscene opportunity for anybody who really wants to see it and get on board with it. I mean, you know, when, when you've got shit, when you've got fertilizer, grow your garden. It's all a matter of mindset. It's all a matter of, of perspective. It's all a matter of how you view it. If you view a tool as the scary demon victimizing you, then you're not going to be able to use the tool, much less use it efficiently. So circumstances, no matter how quote-unquote negative they might seem, are opportunities for growth and expansion and prosperity. But society trains us all to be a bunch of pussies. It really does. We look at opportunity and we get scared shitless and we go into to clinical depression because all our lives we've been taught you're worthless you can't do anything your way your way is wrong everybody else's way is right how dare you be yourself how dare you feel what you feel how dare you express yourself well you know what with nothing but unconditional love in my heart without any judgment whatsoever i say fuck those people i mean honestly fuck those people i don't mean that as a negative like oh they're so evil there's a place in hell reserved for them no i mean that as fine i respect their right to be miserable and their life if they want to, but that's just not my fucking cup of tea. And, you know, apparently, my my mission in life, you know, for those of you who believe in, 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 in God and in life missions, my mission in life is apparently to piss society off as much as possible and the more the better. And the reason I say this is because apparently, in a society based on mediocrity and misery, the more you respect your own right to be yourself, and the more you respect everyone else's right to be themselves, the more people you will piss off, and the better you get at it, the more angry with you they will become. And you know what? Good. <clears throat> I think y'all deserve to be angry. And I don't mean the term deserve in the moral sense, like, oh, you've been a naughty boy, you deserve to go in your corner. No, 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 I don't mean that. I mean that what you put out is what you get back, and that maybe if anger, extreme anger, is what it's gonna take to wake you up and snap you out of your hypnotic fucking trance from parking your fat ass in front of the fucking TV, believing all the bullshit that's on the news that's programming you to be someone you're not. If that's what it's gonna take to wake you up and go, oh, wait a minute, I'm a sovereign human being and I have the right to be who I am, whatever that means. And it doesn't make me a bad, horrible person. I'm just as wonderful and genius as everybody else out there while simultaneously just as flawed and horrible as everybody else out there and everything in between. Level playing field, we're all human. We're one human family. And this whole idea of anybody being the superior to anybody else or yeah, it's it's ridiculous it's fascism it's like being a part of the kkk and going yep yeah, them damn niggers again huh? them inferior niggers we gotta do something about damn niggers well it doesn't matter if you're talking about race or if you're talking about age or if you're talking about gender or if you're trying to compare one societal status to another if you're trying to say someone's a better person because they're a doctor or a lawyer and you're not or, or or what the fuck you're using to either condemn someone else or condemn yourself while you're viewing someone else as superior than you. It doesn't matter. It's all them goddamn niggers. It's that same prejudice. <coughs> Whether you're looking at self-hatred or hating others, which, by the way, you can't do one without the other. J just, just so you know, I know that's going to really fuck with your ego there. But, you know, it's all the same thing. And to try to think that it's different things... You know, you're just deluding yourself. In all honesty, you're being neurotic and delusional 
to think that these are all separate things. Like you can say, oh, well, well, I'm better than somebody else because I make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and they don't. That's that's just every bit as fucking prejudice is going. Damn, damn, niggers! It's just as prejudice. Or to buy into the Stockholm Syndrome fucking bullshit and actually believe that you are inferior to other people because of how you've decided to view them and the crap that they've decided to talk down to you on and you're buying into the lies, that's still falling into the prejudice. And so you're going to have prejudices against other people equal to the prejudice against yourself, you know? And... You know, me speaking out like this and saying this sort of stuff? Yeah! It's gonna piss a lot of people off. I'm gonna offend a lot of fucking egos today. Because ego wants to feel justified. Ego wants to look at me and go, like, Dave, you're being so negative. Stop it, you naughty boy. Oh, you're being so negative. No, stop it. Oh, my bleeding ears. Well, you know, you know where the fuck the stop button is, bitch. There's nothing, you're not shamed to this, uh, this video, <laughs> you know? It, go find the stop button. Yeah, it's simple as that. But you know, ego wants to feel justified. Ego has an addiction to, to feeling right, that smug, arrogant sense of, oh yes, I'm so right. And some people, they're so addicted to being victimized that they have an addiction to feeling wrong. Oh, I'm wrong again, and everyone else is so right. You know, Stockholm Syndrome, folks. <laughs> it seems like the whole planet's got it. I mean, look at what we're doing. We're letting a few morons, top 1% elites, make the rest of us slaves. While we're dancing around chanting, Oh, we're free! Freedom! <laughs> oh, yeah, freedom! Oh, shame on that Obama. He's taken away our freedom. You never had your freedom. He's only being a truthful dictator, whereas all the other dictators before him have lied to you and tricked you into thinking that you had freedom. So he's just basically the most honest dictator. And by honest, I don't mean he's never told a lie. Obama's lied out his fucking ass. By honest, I just mean that he's immediately showing his true colors and... He's not dancing around the idea of screwing us over. He's, you know, he's just bending us straight over and sticking it in and pumping us hard. You know, he's, he's not um, pretending that that's, that's not what he's doing. He's just like, man, you know, he's, he's getting up there and going, I got two words for you, predator drones, motherfucker. So, ha, 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 don't fuck with me. I'll fucking kill your ass and kill your children. I've killed so many children as it is. You're next, you know. I mean, he's not making any qualms about it. He's getting up there like fucking gang lord, bling bling, going, yo, sup, man, sup. I'm gonna put a cap in your ass. And you know what? I'd be saying the same thing in the same way if he was white, too. So don't even try to play the race card for all you fucking morons that are gonna try to bust on me for that shit. <sighs> Obama bombs the little children, all of the children of the world. Red and yellow, white and black, he'll hit him with a drone attack. Obama bombs the little children of the world. Yeah, so I'm, I'm you know, you see where I'm going with that. Anyway, before we get too far off tangent, you see what I'm saying here. And lately, I've just had it reflected where people are having... A lot of difficulty really standing up in their sovereignty because they're feeling guilty. Like, oh my god, I can't do that because then people might not like me. Fuck them! If people don't like you, that's their right to not like you. Just like you you have the right to not like me. If you're listening to this and you hate what I'm saying and you hate me, I love you. More power to you. Rock on. You go. If that's how you sovereignly feel, then fucking awesome for sticking your guns. I applaud you. I'm not even being sarcastic. I'm being completely fucking serious. Go you. Awesome. Give someone give you a cookie or a brownie or something. I mean, seriously, we're so afraid to be ourselves. So afraid to stick up for ourselves. Why? Why? If you think I'm an asshole, tell me I'm an asshole. More power to you. Stick up for yourself. Don't sit there thinking, well, you know, I can't tell Dave that I think he's being an asshole because that would be rude and inappropriate of me. No, it wouldn't. It'd be you being honest with me. 
you think I'm a prick? Tell me! And more power to you for being authentic and honest. You know, I'm sorry, but no matter how much sugar coating you put on dog shit, it's still dog shit. Dog shit is the lack of authenticity. It's not honest, you know? So it doesn't matter how much you sugarcoat dishonesty. It doesn't matter how much you pretend to be polite. Ooh -hoo. It doesn't matter if your truth inside of you, if the true genuine feelings inside of you is, Ugh, that motherfucker, then saying, oh yes, hello, please, thank you. Oh, isn't this such a nice day? Oh, and pretending to be all cheery and polite, then that's, that's just a facade. That's bullshit. That's a lie. You're being a liar. <laughs> You know, there's nothing wrong with being authentic about what you're thinking and how you're feeling. There's nothing criminal about it. There's no reason to feel guilty about it. You're not doing anything wrong. As a matter of fact, anybody who has the balls to be authentic and honest, fucking God bless you. Even if you don't believe in God, may he bless you anyway. You know, I mean, have some balls to be yourself. There's always going to be people who are going to condemn you. And half of them or more are going to be your so-called friends, and a great many of them might even be your so-called family. But, you know, if you respect their right to be who they are, as much as you respect your own right to be who you are, if you can bring yourself to do that, you'll start to love them for being condemning. You'll start to, to love the fact that, wow, they're being authentic with me about who they are. This is the misery that they're in, and they're being honest with me about it. They're not bullshitting me. They're not feeling one thing and saying another. They're coming at me with their misery, and they're saying, this is who I am, now who are you? Well, now you have the choice in who you want to be. You can either align with their misery and become a clone trooper and end up just like them. Or you can say, you know what? That's not for me. And no matter how much resistance you put on me, I'm just going to be me. Do whatever you want in my direction. Attack me however you want. Do whatever you want. You're not going to change the fact that I am who I am. And I'm going to continue to be who I am. No matter what. And if you can stand in that empowerment and in that sovereignty, if you can really bring yourself to believe that about yourself, then you will notice that it's very, very easy and effortless to stand in that place. And you will notice that for someone to try to tear you down out of that place, repeated failure after repeated failure, they will keep wasting their energy and it will require more and more energy on their part until they just wear themselves out and say, fuck it, you know, I don't have the, the time or the energy or anything for this anymore. And, you know, they'll go look for somebody else to fucking subjugate. Somebody who it's not so much trouble to beat up on. You know? And also, on another note, most people don't even know that they're doing that to you. I mean, my God, we think that when we feel attacked that, oh, it must be some evil knowing plot from, from the other person. Well, they usually don't know that they're stuck in their paradigms, and my phone's ringing, so I'll end this video on that note. God bless, and take care.